I recently experienced a surprising drop in my credit score by 25 points, all due to a mistake I made with my credit card. This incident made me realize that many people face similar issues with their credit score, either seeing a sudden decrease or feeling that their score is lower than it should be. In this video, I want to explore five key reasons that could be harming your credit score. More importantly, I'll share strategies to rectify these issues, aiming to boost your score significantly in just a month. I'll also delve into my own error and my plan to recover my credit score to its usual high standard, around 800. Let's start with the error I made, which is actually a common pitfall. The most frequent cause for a dip in credit scores is often linked to new entries on one's credit report. To understand this, let's break down the five components that shape your credit score. By understanding and tweaking these elements, you can effectively improve your score. For instance, when we look at this graphic, we see that new credit is one of those critical components, contributing to about 10% of our scores. You may have noticed that after applying for new credit, your score tends to dip slightly. This is usually due to component number one, a hard inquiry. This results when a lender reviews your credit report before deciding on extending additional credit to you. This decrease is a way to signal the risk that comes with seeking new credit, as it might imply financial strain, even if that's not the case for you. The impact of new credit varies based on individual credit profiles. It could lead to a drop of less than five points or sometimes even more than 10 points for each new account, especially for those with shorter credit histories and fewer accounts. However, there's good news. First, since new credit only makes up about 10% of your credit score, its impact is relatively minor compared to other factors. Secondly, the effect of hard inquiries and new credit diminishes relatively quickly, often fading away after a few months. A common misconception is that obtaining new credit is detrimental in the long term. In reality, the influence of new credit is minor and temporary. After a few months, other factors with a higher impact start to dominate and can actually lead to an increase in your score. But there's a flip side. The same factors that can boost your score might also cause it to plummet if not managed carefully. This is exactly what led to my 25-point score decrease overnight. So let's move on to the second reason your credit score might be suffering, carrying a high balance. This relates to the amounts owed component, which influences about 30% of your score. A significant aspect of this is your credit utilization, the ratio of your credit card balances to their limits. Credit utilization is calculated by dividing your statement balance at the end of a billing cycle, as shown on your credit card statement, by your card's limit. This ratio can either increase or decrease your score. Most experts advise keeping this ratio below 30%, ideally under 10%, for each credit card and across all cards combined. A lower utilization rate suggests responsible credit management and a lower risk of payment issues. In my case, I aim for a utilization rate of about 1 to 2%. However, I recently encountered an issue with this. After being added as an authorized user on a family member's card, the card's activity started reflecting in my credit report. Typically, a higher credit limit leads to lower utilization if spending remains consistent. For instance, a $200 balance on a $20,000 limit equals 1% utilization, which is excellent. But a higher balance would increase this ratio. In my scenario, a European trip was charged to the card, resulting in a statement balance of $1,651. When divided by the $20,000 limit, the utilization was 8.2%, not too high, but significantly more than my usual 1% to 2%, causing a temporary score drop. Normally, if I anticipate a higher statement balance, 
I pay down some of it before the statement closing date, ensuring a lower balance is reported. But I overlooked this on the new authorized user account, leading to a 25 point drop in my score. The silver lining here is that credit utilization doesn't have a memory in current scoring models. So even though my utilization was higher last month, lowering it this month by carefully managing and paying down the balance should help my score recover. It's worth noting, particularly for those with credit scores in the high 700s or low 800s, that maintaining a utilization rate of 1% to 2% at all times isn't crucial unless you're planning to apply for significant new credit like a mortgage or another credit card. In such cases, aiming for a utilization below 10% is generally sufficient. But when preparing to apply for major credit, it's advisable to lower your utilization to those minimal percentages in the months leading up to your application. Moving on, the third reason for potential harm to your credit score could be related to the age of your credit accounts. This aspect accounts for approximately 15% of your credit score. It might seem like a factor beyond your control, but there are key strategies to manage it effectively. Patience is crucial here, as time naturally increases the age of your accounts, boosting this aspect of your score. The age of your credit is determined by two key elements, the age of your oldest account and the average age across all your accounts. Changes in these can either raise or lower your score, influenced by opening new accounts or closing old ones. For instance, if your oldest account is seven years old and you have other accounts that are five and three years old, your oldest account's age is seven years with an average age of five years across all accounts. But if you were to close your oldest account or if it drops off your report and simultaneously open a new account, your oldest account's age and your average age of credit would decrease, potentially lowering your score. Hence, the first tip here is to start with a no annual fee credit card as your first account and never close it. This approach ensures that your oldest account keeps aging, positively influencing your score. If your first credit account does have an annual fee, try downgrading it to a no-fee version, or if you decide to close it, ensure the rest of your credit profile is strong enough to handle the impact. The fourth tip is to be judicious with new credit applications. Rapidly opening new accounts can lower the average age of your credit. However, since the age of credit is a moderate factor, impacting about 15% of your score, it's advisable to limit new credit applications to once every three to six months. This approach helps maintain a healthy average age of credit and also mitigates the number of hard inquiries, beneficial for the new credit aspect we discussed earlier. A slow and steady approach is generally best for managing your credit score. Be deliberate about your credit actions, aligning them with your financial goals. The fourth reason your credit score might not be as high as you'd like is due to a lack of diversity in your credit mix. This factor also accounts for 10% of your score. Credit scoring models favor those who have demonstrated responsible management of various types of credit, such as credit cards, mortgages, and car loans. However, it's not advisable to take on different types of credit merely to improve your score. The key is to let your credit mix develop naturally over time, adding new credit types when it makes financial sense for you. For instance, while having a diverse credit mix, like adding a mortgage or a car loan can enhance your score, it's crucial not to force these additions. Begin with a no annual fee credit card and gradually incorporate other credit forms as your life circumstances evolve. This way, you're not only building a diverse credit mix, but also doing so under favorable financial conditions, benefiting from the best interest rates due to a strong credit score. Lastly, the most critical factor affecting your credit score, accounting for 35%, is your payment history. 
This element requires maintaining a flawless record of on-time payments across all accounts. Consistent, timely payments reflect reliability and trustworthiness to lenders. It's essential to manage payments meticulously, whether it's a fixed rate mortgage or credit card bills. For credit cards, it's not just about making the minimum payment by the due date to avoid late fees. It's about paying the full statement balance to evade costly interest charges. Even if you miss a payment deadline, don't panic. Making the payment within 30 days can prevent your credit score from taking a hit, as most issuers don't report a missed payment until after that period. However, a payment that's more than 30 days late is more likely to be reported to credit bureaus and can significantly damage your score. The severity of the impact increases with the lateness of the payment. 60 days is worse than 30, and 90 days is even more detrimental. Additionally, multiple missed payments have a compounded negative effect. To avoid these pitfalls, I've adopted a few strategies that have been instrumental in elevating my credit score. Firstly, I ensure not to overextend with new credit accounts, as this could lead to hard inquiries and a reduction in the average age of my credit. Secondly, and most importantly, I never miss a payment. For my installment loans, such as a car loan, I use auto pay, ensuring automatic deductions from my bank account each month. For my credit cards, I set reminders for payment due dates. A helpful tip is to synchronize the payment dates for your credit cards to a single date, if possible, for easier management. Lastly, I regularly monitor the balances on my credit cards to ensure they don't exceed a certain percentage of the credit limits. If they do, I make interim payments before the statement closing date, which helps maintain a low credit utilization ratio, positively influencing my score. Understanding when and how much to pay on your credit cards can be confusing, particularly concerning credit utilization. So subscribe to our channel for tips and tricks that will keep you ahead of the game. Improving and maintaining a high credit score involves a combination of patience, careful management of credit utilization, judicious handling of new credit applications, a gradual buildup of a diverse credit mix, and most crucially, ensuring a perfect payment history. By focusing on these key areas, you can not only recover from dips in your credit score, but also build it to higher levels over time. 